So, uh, my name is Bill Kramer. I'm the director of uh, the Blue Waters Project at NCSA. I'd like to welcome you all here to Sun River in Central Oregon for our third Blue Waters, Blue Waters Symposium, uh, the 2015 edition of the symposium. And I'd like to thank everybody who spent so much time yesterday and the day before traveling here uh, and going through whatever uh, issues you had to get here. Uh, we're very proud of you for your perseverance. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, first, uh, before we introduce some other people and talk a little bit about the logistics of the symposium, uh, I wanted to just let you know a little bit about where we're at. Uh, this happens to be uh, Sun River. It's a resort, but before that, it has a long history in the West. It's where uh, John Fremont came through, uh, Kit Carson came through here, exploring the rivers around here. Uh, for uh, a, it has a personal connection uh, in the sense that uh, during World War II, uh, this was an army camp. It was the Corps of Engineers uh, training camp. There was also a, a, a pilot training facility a little bit up the road in Redmond. Uh, <clears throat> so during uh, the 1943, 1944 or so, uh, the Corps of Engineers was training uh, their, their people before they went overseas here in Camp Abbott. Abbott was named after the first uh, railroad uh, surveyor, Lieutenant Abbott, who came through this region laying out the tracks for the railroad. So there are some interesting components when all the, all the property around here is national forest as well as uh, what the camp used to be. And uh, it was bought as a ranch and then turned into a resort in, in uh, around 19, the end of the 1960s. But the personal connection is it turned out my uncle was stationed here. And um, the Great Hall, where uh, you will have lunch and, and dinner, uh, was built by the Corps of Engineers during that time period, and he helped build the Great Hall. Uh, my aunt also came out to Oregon to be with him for, uh, before he went overseas, and uh, we believe that that's where my cousin came from, uh, my older cousin. So, uh, so, so there's this connection uh, we didn't know we realized here, but we we uh, decided to try a venue that uh, was different than uh, Champaign-Urbana, Central Illinois, uh, in terms of our series. Uh, we wanted to make things interesting for you as attendees and also provide a good forum for you to not only present your, your uh, results and present your information uh, and accomplishments, but also to interact with each other, interact with us from the Blue Waters Project and some new people that we'll talk about uh, that are joining the project uh, to help you uh, on your codes and, and uh, <coughs> do accomplish your science and engineering. So that's a little bit about the, the background here. You can look more up on the history or look up what uh, goes on around here and uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, but uh, we're not gonna let you have any fun. We have things scheduled from 7.30 in the morning to about <coughs> uh, 11 o'clock at night. So uh, this is all work, this is no fun. So, uh, uh, but no, not really uh, for that. Uh, so we had some challenges, as uh, some of you may know. Uh, <clears throat> that's a picture of uh, what things looked like uh, yesterday in, in the United States. So we'll have some people that, uh, we, uh, there's some shifting of the calendars and the schedules that Cheryl Run has done, she'll talk about. Uh, but we do have some people that are arriving today, a fair number of people arriving today. So <clears throat> uh, we're fortunate for that. And we appreciate, like I said, all the perseverance. Uh, this evening, when we have dinner, uh, we will have a, a speaker but uh, we're also gonna have a little contest. So we're gonna ask you all to uh, indicate how long your delays were and how uh, unusual your routing was and then we'll pick a winner and announce the winner of, of them. The, the most difficult travel, the furthest travel, uh, whatever. So, so think about that and we'll pass around some sheets for you to sign up on, on uh, what, uh, what your challenges were. Um, I think this is it. So here is the, the, the weather forecast uh, here. So today we're gonna have some rain, uh, but not real hard rain, I don't think, but some rain as you saw outside. And then it should get a little bit better throughout the week. So um, uh, we did uh, have this discussion when we were deciding on what uh, I, I call the gifts that we give objects of desire. We want them to be something more than just a token little thing um, <clears throat> that you put in your bag and, and never use. So when we were deciding what to provide, we did have this discussion, maybe it'll be too hot for a jacket, uh, maybe, it, you know, maybe it should be something else, but it turned out we made a 
pretty good uh, uh, choice because I think the temperature is just about right for, for the jackets that you're receiving. So if you haven't received your jacket when you signed in, uh, uh, please do so. And if, if you have received the jacket and the size isn't right, uh, please take it back and, and we'll swap it for one that is. Um, the other thing uh, is last time uh, we didn't give the jackets out until the last day when you handed in your survey. And that turned out to be a great decision because we got <coughs> uh, uh, about 80% of the people turned in surveys. So this time we're giving the jackets out up front. We still expect you to turn in your survey before you leave. Uh, and we do expect you to stay uh, the three days for everybody that, that is possibly going to stay and attend the sessions. Uh, but just to make sure that there is still a lot of surveys that get turned in, because uh, it helps us improve it. Actually, we changed some things last year for, based on your input. Uh, there is another little uh, uh, object of desire in when you turn your survey in at the end of the week uh, that will be available for, uh, for you. So, so please remember to do that. Uh, we'll remind you a couple times as we go through this. Uh, that last thing that Rudy was talking about is, is uh, one of the themes of our conference. We have three that we, uh, some of our speakers that will be joining us later uh, will talk about. One is obviously the, the synergy between uh, large scale, high performance computing and high performance data analysis and what that means for the future, both scientifically but also uh, for how uh, systems and, and infrastructure is, is uh, created. <coughs> the ability and, and the need and methods of expressing impact be at different levels to different people. And then um, also education. So those are the themes of our conference. The education uh, part of the Blue Waters project is extremely important. Uh, it's something we pay a great deal of attention to. And we're very fortunate here to have a, a number of students. Uh, we have uh, Blue Waters Fellows, these are graduate students that have been awarded Blue Waters Fellowships for the last two years, as well as uh, some of the uh, uh, undergraduate interns that are here that will be presenting uh, posters this evening for you, and I'm going to introduce them to you now so that you see who they are. We also have with uh, individual teams a number of other students uh, <coughs> that uh, we're very pleased to have here as well. So let me go uh, introduce the Blue Waters Fellows. Um, last year, we were able to fund <coughs> 10 fellowships. Uh, you see their names there uh, in, in their smiling faces. Uh, I would like to ask the uh, fellows uh, from 2014-15 uh, to stand up and let people see you. Uh, we'll embarrass you. Uh, these folks have worked for a year, and uh, at this symposium, they will be presenting results and accomplishments of their year's work. Uh, and we hope to, that that will continue on Blue Waters. They will continue to have access to Blue Waters uh, in the future. So thank you all very much. I would uh, encourage you to go talk to these folks. They're the new generations of uh, researchers and, and people in high performance computing and see how you might be able to uh, give them some support and guidance, uh, but also have fun learning about what they're doing. Uh, last week, we announced uh, six 2015-16 uh, graduate fellows. If I can ask you all to stand up. The, they're just starting their introduction. We had a meeting this morning, so they're uh, getting the fire hose of information. And uh, Steve Gordon, where's Steve? Steve is over here. He's part of the Blue Waters Project, and he is uh, coordinating all these activities uh, for us and uh, helped uh, with the submission process. It turns out it's highly competitive, and thank you, you can sit down. I won't keep you up there. Uh, so we're very pleased with that. We had a, a tremendous number of highly qualified people and uh, went through that process to select them, and we'll be looking forward to working with uh, uh, these new folks throughout the year in addition to uh, helping them with their, their educational costs. Um, <clears throat> next, uh, we have our undergraduate interns. There are five, but one is not quite here yet. Um, so these are four here. Can I ask you to stand up, please? Good, so, so these folks are part of the uh, undergraduate internship program. Uh, Bob, Bob Schroeder, 
Bob is managing that for the Blue Waters Project, uh, as well as helping coordinate this meeting here through Schoder Foundation. Uh, and you folks can sit down. Uh, this is the first time we've had undergraduates to our meeting, and they will be presenting their posters. Uh, they, they also competed to have the opportunity to come here and present their posters. So uh, the entire program of, I think, 25, 24, 25 folks are, um, uh, so we're eligible, and these are the folks that uh, were chosen. So uh, I'd like to share with you uh, congratulating all these uh, students and exceptional uh, talent uh, for uh, participating in the Blue Waters Project. So thank you, and let's give them a round of applause. <clears throat> and please make them feel welcome uh, throughout the, the, the day here. Uh, and uh, the fellows uh, from last year are going to be presenting, as I said, uh, as part of the program. <clears throat> So now I have uh, the opportunity to introduce another new thing. You probably have seen releases on that, uh, but uh, we were fortunate uh, to be able to uh, have NSF fund another activity uh, called Cadence, uh, which has the goals of helping share the science and education uh, and uh, knowledge that is accumulated in the science disciplines you work in, but share it in a much broader manner. And Donna Cox and, and Rob, Bob Pattison are here. You guys want to stand up for a second? Uh, and they're very interested in <coughs> um, talking with you and uh, uh, working with you to try to accumulate the next generations of things. But as you see, uh, the goal of this project, funded by uh, NSF, is to produce documentaries. Some are full dome shows that are highly complex, takes a, a tremendous amount of effort, not just the visualizations, but the orchestration, the production of that, and the narration <coughs> of those, as well as some high definition uh, documentaries. Uh, and in a couple months, uh, the first uh, of these three dome shows are gonna be premiered um, in, uh, and it's called Solar Superstorms and uh, we'll give you some highlights. So these are just examples of uh, some rough cuts uh, from two of the Blue Waters uh, uh, professors, uh, I'm sorry, Blue Waters um, uh, 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 projects <coughs> that were chosen for putting together. There's a number of others that, that are in this as well, but we only have time to highlight a little bit. But what I wanna do is show you kind of the level of, of, of visualization and what uh, hopefully we'll go into all these shows. Donna and Bob are gonna be, uh, have a, a room and they would very much like to engage with you and interview you uh, and talk to you about how for the next generations of things uh, they might be able to uh, help uh, advertise and share in a much broader way uh, what you're doing scientifically. <clears throat> So this is a, uh, an example of Homer. You see some of the uh, characteristics of his simulation. This was work that he was doing as part of his scientific work. Uh, but if I can do this properly, uh, uh, here's a little snippet of uh, the, the dome show. Uh, and you can see uh, the levels of visualization that uh, will be occurring. And this will be, if you can envision it, over an entire uh, uh, large-scale dome in museums, in planetariums, and in other forms. So, uh, is Homer in the audience yet? Uh, if not, uh, I'll, I'll leave it for him uh, and you to talk about what this really means, uh, or you can talk offline uh, with Donna and Bob. But as you see, it's a quite impressive level of display and, and visualization for this, and it gets kind of better towards the end, so we'll let it run for, for um, uh, it runs about a minute and a half. <clears throat> and this is the, the solar wind impinging upon the, the magnetosphere of the Earth. And you can see uh, where some of the, the uh, magnetic lines begin to be disassociated at the, uh, at the back, and, the, and here's now the bow shock um, <clears throat> coming with that. So, so if you'd like to have your areas of science uh, highlighted like this and some of the future... Uh, 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 productions. Um, talk to Donna and Bob and, and talk about that. And this is being, this one is going to be narrated by um, uh, Benjamin uh, Com Bene Benedict Cumberbatch. Uh, <coughs> I don't know if he's using his smooth voice or his uh, um, uh, um, Sherlock Holmes voice, but. Is he? All right, so he's recording today uh, for, for this, and it's about a 30-minute uh, uh, film. 
So you kind of see what that is. Let's. Um, uh, John Wise also uh, has uh, another uh, part of this, another segment here. I think Bob Stein has some of it as well. Uh, and just as an example of uh, what this looks like. Yeah, so, but it, it gets explosive towards the end, doesn't it? <laughs> so, um, uh, this was, the, these um, are, there was a call for participation you may have seen that went out uh, asking people to propose uh, items, either f a full documentary or, or pieces of that, and that's been evaluated. There's a science uh, um, advisory committee for this activities. Uh, Tom Dunning, who's sitting over there, is a member of that uh, as well, if I recall properly. And um, now, now these are exploding, right? So these are the supernova exploding in the uh, early part of the, the, the universe. So just some highlights um, for uh, what we're trying to do to help expose all the way from uh, the general public all the way through pretty sophisticated discussions and, and all this is scientifically based, all this is real uh, simulation data that's being used. So it's an expression of real science just in a way that is maybe uh, slightly more easily consumed. So talk to Donna and Bob and um, <clears throat> with that. So uh, now I'd like to introduce the person that is uh, responsible for uh, putting this all together and has been uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, not only has organized it, but has reorganized the meeting about three or four times, Charon Olson, uh, who's the senior project manager for the Blue Waters Project. Thank you. Um, so thank you again for coming. Uh, the first thing I want to point out is this year we took your advice and we improved the agenda and it's an online agenda. Um, on the back of your badge, you'll see that you have a reference to where it is. Speaking of reorganizing, it's still in flux, so some of the afternoon sessions are still being um, reorganized just a little bit, so check back at lunch to make sure that you're where you want to be. Um, and also, uh, for people who are on Facebook or Twitter, you can uh, speak at Blue Waters. So we have a number of NCSA staff here, and we have a number of NCSA still on their way. Um, you've met Bill Kramer. We also have Bill Gropp, who is a co-PI of the project, and Wynn May is on his way. Many of you have been working with our application support team, and uh, we encourage you to continue those conversations and put a face with the name, the person who you've been corresponding with on those JIRA tickets. We have Greg, Victor, Galen, Manisha, Craig, and Andre. We also have several other people here from various parts of the project. Jeremy Enos um, from the systems management side, Mike Showerman as well. Celso Mendes is over here, keeps track of some of our quality assurance. Rob Cisneros with visualization. Um, Adam Slego with cybersecurity. And um, Scott Lathrop and Steve Gordon, who you recently met with respect to the education. For storage, we have Michelle, I see her sitting in the back, and Jason Alt is also here. So any questions you have, um, please track them down. Um, Tim and Eric are here, and they'll talk to you later in the week about some of our networking um, things that have been going on. Liz Murray is on her way, she's from our public affairs, and we really want to help to tell your story. So if you have something good that's going on, something that's exciting, um, track her down and just say, hey, Liz, I have an idea. Let's, let's work together on this story. We want to um, help tell your story and share the good news. So um, she's also the person to talk to if you have any questions about what needs to be done for your submissions to the annual report. And Amy Dillman, who you met at registration, is here from our Human Resources Department. <coughs> 